In this video, I'm going to talk about how to fast track your promotion. So stay tuned. Hi, welcome to Shreya TV. Here I talk about executive presence, purpose and style. So if you're interested in all or any of these three, this channel is for you. And if you haven't already, this is the time to subscribe to my channel. Because if you're watching this video, I believe that you want no fluff and most concrete juicy matter. And this channel is all about that. We talk about real confidence and real executive presence. So hit the subscribe button before we move forward. Every year, at least 30% of my client inquiries are all about that they want to get promoted, but for some reason they are not being promoted. So I thought this is the perfect time to make a video on promotions. I want you to watch this video till the end because I'm going to share five uh, tried, tested and positive strategies that are workable to get a promotion. And uh, each point is relevant and each point is equally important. So it, it won't make sense if you do one and not the other. So stick till the end till you get all the five strategies. Number one. You have to highlight your work guilt-free. Would you believe that 6 out of 10 clients tell me that they expected their management to recognize their work and that they didn't like that they had to go and speak about their uh, good work and their contributions to the organization? Do you think that it's unfair that we have to promote or sell our work to the management? Is that an unfair ask? I'll say no. If you are good at what you do, if you deliver good quality work, if you believe in your own performance, then it is also your own responsibility to ensure that your work is highlighted. And you must not do it overnight. There has to be some consistency. It has to come very organically, naturally from the get-go. Whatever good work that you do, you have to look for outlets to speak about that in appropriate forums. By the way, I made a video on how to highlight your work without sounding hokey. And you might want to check out this video that I made about a year back. It has really interesting nuggets of highlighting work and the tips and techniques on how to highlight work in a nice way so that you don't feel awkward. That if you are doing good work, Consider it as a part of your job description to also talk about your work. And that's and when it becomes a part of your job description, this entire process of speaking about your good work is going to be more easy because a lot of us prefer to receive job descriptions and guidelines. And if you put highlighting the work as a part of that description, it's going to work very well for you. Strategy number two, be an opportunist. And it is not bad to be an opportunist. Organizations value people who are interested in growth. Because if you understand the essence of growth, you will also be interested in the growth of, let's say, the organization or your department. So it's very important for you to seek uh, growth opportunities whenever possible. Even if that means attending certain kind of webinars and conferences and coming back and sharing the minutes of the meetings with your team without any immediate expectations. Even if you might not get immediate opportunities to speak or present your work, Ask for it. Keep going for it. Don't bring in your ego. A lot of times we bring in our ego in between thinking that why should I go and ask? If they feel I'm the right person, they will give it to me. This is related to point number one. It, it's an unfair ask. It might not happen. There are so many of us. You have to give a benefit of doubt to people that they might not consider you if you don't reach out to them. They might not think you are a possible candidate for whatever if you don't think that you're a possible candidate, as simple as that. Also, don't forget there are always biases. Uh, biases happen uh, between parents and children as well. There is always, as they say, you know, one favorite child. So imagine at work, is that not going to happen? Uh, the management might have that one favorite person or a few favorite people who they might consider as the ones to give the opportunity. But if you think that the opportunity is rightly yours and if you think that for that you need to be visible, then it's your duty to seek out those opportunities to be visible. Strategy number three, please keep investing in your skill development. Whatever work that you do, whether you are a project manager and if you think that you need a PMP certification or you think you work in artificial intelligence and you need an AI certification course, if you think that you should do a machine learning course, 
If you're a graphic designer and there's a new course that you need to study about graphic designing, business strategies, marketing strategies, executive MBA, whatever that you think from a technical standpoint that you need to brush up, never wait for it. In fact, that also needs to be consistent. Ideally, you should be doing one or two courses every year. Why is that important? Because a lot of times we feel stuck in a zone, we feel stuck in a department and we want to move out. So when you do a different, when you develop different kind of skills, you are preparing yourself for a horizontal growth. Or even if you want to move out of a company and you want to seek better job opportunities, you can completely move out from the current job profile and look for new profiles on the basis of the technical skills that you have developed through certifications. So please don't shy away from uh, taking uh, technical skills skill development courses. Strategy number four, work on your communication skills. Now, being from the industry of communication, I know that it is such a wide term, but let me tell you what should you be working on in communication skills. For starters, if you need to upgrade your language skills, go for that and that should be your primary objective. Uh, quite a lot of my clients, when they reach out to me, the source of their lack of confidence is because uh, their language is not very proficient. And by language, I mostly mean English language. They are not very comfortable speaking English fluently or their accent is not neutralized and they have to primarily speak in English at work and they don't feel very comfortable and confident. Hence, it comes in the way of their presence and because of that, uh, their promotion gets delayed because their management feels that in case this person has to represent the organization at a global level, maybe they don't look ready. The other thing you should work on is your presentation and speaking skills. That matters so much. No matter how good you are at what you do, if you don't know how to present that work, if you haven't worked on your body language, if you haven't worked on your voice, if you are not comfortable speaking in front of an audience, whether an audience of 10 people or 100 people, then you've not made the cut and you will not be considered for bigger roles because bigger roles mostly mean dealing with people, presenting to people, talking to people. So if you're not comfortable addressing crowds, if your social skills are not strong, then please don't expect a promotion coming your way anytime soon. Finally, strategy number five, work on your appearance. The way you dress and the way you appear as much as we want to deny, it matters. Humans give a lot of attention and importance to first impressions. So and it, it's talked about so much. This word has become so overused, also misused, that I refrain from talking about it. And I've also spoken about that in one of my videos on how to create good first impressions. Please check this out. But if you haven't given a serious thought to dressing and how you appear, and you are thinking about promotions, come back, be more thoughtful about how you appear because promotion also means that other people start looking up to you. It's not only uh, your designation and your role, but they also start looking up to who you are as a person and how do you conduct yourself. And here I do not propagate expensive clothing, fancy dressing, spending a lot of money, complete wardrobe, wardrobe revamp. I don't talk about all of that. If you've seen my work ever, you will know that I talk about sustainable dressing. Look right. for the right strategies of dressing. Look for what suits you, what looks good on you within your limited means. And anyway, it's always a good idea to appear and look good, not only for that promotion, but for your own self-esteem, uh, good body image uh, and, and healthy uh, self-image. Now it's over to you. Comment below and you should tell me which of these five strategies are you going to start implementing from today, not tomorrow, from today. If you like this video, show your love, like the video and share it with as many people as you think should watch stuff like this. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.